Hey everybody, David Shapiro here with uh, part two of my Getting Started with Python and GPT-3 from Scratch uh, video series. Uh, before we get started, please go ahead and like and subscribe this video. Uh, that will help me work towards getting monetized on YouTube, which who knows, maybe one day I'll be able to do this full time. But also, if you like uh, my videos, my content, you find them helpful, please consider hopping over to my Patreon, link in the description or comments. Um, and consider uh, supporting me directly. Um, that will go much further towards um, helping me to do this full time. Um, you see how I churn out content. Um, I'm happy to keep doing this and the more support I get, the better it'll be. So without further ado, let's jump back over to our, uh, our project, our learning. So this is our repo. This is where we left off. We did a hello world, um, a readme and, uh, and so on and so forth. Now what I've done is I added a um, I added git ignore uh, and what git ignore does is I've added OpenAI API key because last time I said whatever you do don't ever store your um, API key um, publicly or in a git repo and so what git ignore does and this is what it looks like locally is it tells git to ignore that file. Um, you can do directories, you can do wildcards as well. So you could do like star.json to ignore all JSON files. That's fine. So, but if I look in my repo, my key is here. So you should have, last time, you should have created this text file um, and populated it um, and, uh, get in, and get your hello world to work. So let's take a quick look at hello world. Um, all this does is opens a file sets the API, or it, it, first we declare a function that opens a file, reads it, and returns um, that file contents. And then we have a, a function that will do a DaVinci completion. Um, and then we will, we'll, uh, we, get, we pass it a prompt that says write a list of famous American actors. We get the response from GPT-3, and then we print it out. So I'm assuming you did your homework, and you've, you've tested this. So Python, hello world. So it'll take just a second, and then it'll spit out Tom Hanks, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Brad Pitt. Excellent. So it works. Now, this was all statically coded. So what are we going to do? We need to do something more useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to the playground, and we're going to do some prompt engineering. So let's just say we want to do our first chatbot. Um, so we'll say the following is a conversation between user and Jax. Jax is a sentient, sentient uh, machine with the goal of, um, I don't wanna say something evil like taking over the world. Let's say Jax is a sentient machine with the goal of, um, I don't know, world peace. That's fine. Um, okay, so let's say user Hey Jax, uh, what are you doing today? And then let's see what happens if we just hit enter. It says, Jax, I'm working on my plans for world peace. Not bad. So what's the first thing that you notice? Um, there's a space here. Uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but we'll, we will have to contend with that space um, if we, uh, if, when we go to automate this in code. It's like, okay. User, okay. How are you going to achieve that? And then we say, what's next? I'm still working out the details, but I'm confident I can make a difference. User, so you're not that smart, are you? I'm being real sassy here. Oh, okay. All right, so you can see that this works. So now what do we do? How do we actually take this into um, and, and do this with code? So let me show you. So the first thing we do is we copy down this prompt, this initial prompt, and you see how sen how 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 um, how simple it is. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll copy that. We'll say we'll save this into a new file, do a couple new lines, and then we'll do block. And I'll show you what we do with the block in just a minute. So we'll save this as prompt chat. So now we have this, which is just a copy paste of what we did in the playground. And it's like, okay, well, how do we accumulate these, this chat? How do we, what do we do here? I'm glad you asked. So we'll, get, we'll start a new file 
and then we'll do file f uh, alt f a for alt uh, file save as, and we'll go to all types, and we'll say um, chat dot pi. So now we've got a new um, we've got a new uh, 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 Python script that we're working on. This will be in the repo, so you will have been able to just clone this down. Um, but what I recommend that you do is that you ignore the existing file, you can look at it for reference, but that you follow along and do this coding um, by hand. So first what we'll do is we'll just copy the existing code that we have that works. Um, there is no shame in, in recycling uh, your old code. Um, just remember that if you have errors in your old code, you're copying those errors. I do that all the time. Um, okay, so we start here, we've got our completion. Um, it uses DaVinci. Um, and we say prompt write a list of famous American actors. All right, so here's your first big Python lesson. We want to have an open-ended chat. So there's a few things that we need to do. First, we get rid of the prompt, not using that. Um, so we'll say while true, oops. So while true, this is, what's called a, this is what's called a loop. There's a few kinds of loops. The two primary loops that you'll use are a while loop um, and so if you do while true, it's just always true. So this is an infinite loop. So while true, what are we going to do? Uh, well, first we need user input and we'll say user input equals input. Um, and we'll just say user, oops, user. And it's that simple. So this is a built-in um, uh, construct, a built-in function for Python that allows you to just take in console user, um, uh, console input from the user. Great, okay, now what? Ah, well we forgot a step, what do we, where do we put this? Do we just pass this? Um, do we just do GPT-3 completion user input? What do you think is gonna happen? Nothing, because let, let's say that you, you see something that says like, that you get this variable. Here, let me just show you actually, Python. Um, uh, user input equals input user it says user um hey Jax, are you alive okay now what so then we say print user input hey Jax, are you alive so if we just print this or if we just send this up to gpt3 it's not going to do anything for us <laughs> it kind of intuits that uh that it's a machine or or whatever but there's no other framing, right? So it, 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 if we, however, um, go back to our uh, prompt right here, we say, user, hey Jax, are you alive? Of course I am. I'm a sentient machine with a goal of world peace. See, a little bit different. All right, so how do we do this? Glad you asked. So we say, so we're gonna say, no, that's not what we're gonna do. We're not gonna just send up our base in, uh, input. We're gonna say conversation equals list. So what you can do is this is called instantiating a variable or declaring a variable. So now conversation, we're saying conversation is an empty list. So we're gonna accumulate it as a list of, um, as a list of text. And what this does is this instantiates another variable, um, a text, variable or a, a string variable as um, as an input. Okay, great. So then what do we do with it? Well, how do you add something to a list? So first you do conversation dot append. And then we don't want just we don't want just this. We want this to look so hey, Jax, are you alive? But if you look here, I had this little bit so it tells you who was speaking, right? you see that in every text message, every chat, you gotta know who's speaking. So we wanna have both the user and hey Jax, are you alive? So what we do here is we do, um, we'll copy this bit, so that'll be, that'll be hard coded. And then we'll do percent %s. And so basically that's a placeholder for uh, populating a string, so percent %s means populate a string here. And then we're gonna do percent %user input. And so this says, all right, when you, when you store this variable, populate this bit with this variable. And so then what happens is uh, in memory, it'll look just like this. Great, okay, now what? 
um, how do we convert uh, how do we convert this conversation into something usable um, so that we can actually send it up to GPT-3? So let me let me go ahead and just um, I'll I'll follow along here in um, in the uh, Python interpreter here. This is a little big. So we'll say okay. So conversation equals list. Okay, cool. You can do you can follow along in your in your own interpreter. Um, and we'll say uh, conversation dot append user. Um, hey, Jax, are you alive? Okay, so that's what it'll look like. And then we do print conversation. And you see how it's it's wrapped in brackets. That's how you know that it's a list. Okay, so then then what? Let's imagine that Jax gave us a response. Actually, we can just go ahead and copy Jax's response. So we're, we're basically simulating what's going to be happening in the background. So then we'll do conversation dot append and then add the, uh, uh, the single quote and do shift insert. So the reason that I do shift insert instead of control V is that sometimes your terminal session doesn't really like control V um, and shift insert is just a little more reliable. Um, so of course I am. Okay, so now if we do print conversation, you see that user, hey Jax, are you live? Jax, of course I am. One advantage of a list is that it is always in the order that you add it, that you create it in. And so um, lists are, uh, what is that? It's not immutable. It may be immutable, no. I can't remember the exact term right now. But anyways, lists are always gonna be in the order in which you created them. Okay, so, um, now what? So like conversation, so let's say print um, conversation and then if we do bracket zero, so that's index zero, that'll just print the first part and the second part. How do we, how do we get this up into GPT-3? Um, what we need to do is we need to convert this list into a full text block so that you can see as it gets bigger and gets accumulated, we will have, um, we'll have a, a, a something that we can take from a list, we can accumulate the conversation, we can save it locally, but then we also need to be able to convert it back into text to send it in a GPT-3 prompt. Because GPT-3 doesn't understand Python lists, it only understands text. So what we do here is we do um, single uh, single quote, slash backslash n, so that's for new line, and then we do dot join. So this is, this is a method that is built into the string type in Python that allows you to, um, it's basically a list comprehension. And so what we'll do is do uh, conversation. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll do uh, text equals uh, backslash in join conversation. So one new line, and then we're gonna put a new line between every bit of conversation. So then if we do print text, it puts it back into one text block. Great. So we'll just copy that code because that's exactly what we need. Um, text and join, excuse me. Um, okay, great. So now we've got the text block that we wanna put here. Um, so basically what it's gonna look like when we're done, copy that real quick. We're gonna say it's gonna look like this. And if we put this into um, up into GPT-3, we can test how it's gonna look. So user, um, yes, but how do you know you're, a, you're alive? <laughs> there you go. Okay, so you can see this is this is coming right along, but we're still we're still a couple steps shy. Let's do a Control Z to undo that. So we've got this little token here, and it's like, okay, well, what do we do next? All right, so we will use we'll say prompt equals open file. So this open file is the function that I wrote here. And we're gonna say open prompt underscore chat dot text. That's this right here. Um, and so we just pass it. And what this passes back, it just passes. Um, it says return in file read. So it'll read the file for us and it'll pass it back as is. But what we want to do is we want to replace this block with the text. Um, you know, so basically we'll do that. We'll we'll do functionally the same um, that we did just a minute ago. Whoopsies. That's not what I meant to do. There we go. 
Okay, so we'll save that. Um, we'll, 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 we'll functionally replace that block so that it'll look like this, right? So we'll do a virtual control V to paste in, instead of having this, this placeholder, we'll actually paste in our, um, our, our text block. So we do dot replace, and then we'll say, what are we gonna replace? We're gonna look for block, and we're gonna replace it with text. And so this variable right here is this one. And so you see how text is used in multiple places? That's bad form. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename this and, and we'll call this text block. Um, Cause that's a little bit more specific about what, what it is that it is. So this is the conversation. This is the text block of the conversation. So we'll do that. And this will make the prompt is gonna look just like this. Now there's one last step missing. So uh, fortunately, uh, da Vinci um, is, uh, this, this one is aligned well enough so that it knows once it sees a couple of messages back and forth, it knows what format to follow. However, we don't want to rely on that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add just a little bit to the end of the prompt. So we'll say prompt equals prompt plus, we'll do one more new line, jacks. And so basically what that'll make it look like is this. Um, so uh, it, it, we're basically we're basically priming the next line because one thing that can happen this this is doing pretty well not to do this but one thing that can happen is if you don't have this here it might like uh, continue the users side see how what it did here is if I took out the um, the question mark it added in the question mark for me and then continued with jacks but let's say you didn't want that um, and you just say jacks. See, it's a little bit different. So you gotta be very careful about the text that you pass back. Okay, so we, we, uh, we, we load our prompt, we populate it with the text block of the conversation, and we say, okay, Jax, you're up. So now what? Now we do um, response. Actually here, we've already got that code here. So response equals GPT-3 completion prompt. So this is gonna be Jax's answer. Um, and so what we'll do is we will do print Jax, and then we'll do comma response. So print allows you to print multiple variables at once. So we're basically printing two string variables, and when you put a comma between it, it basically just acts like a space. It won't work if you do this because it's like, I don't know how to, how to view these two things. So we just do Jax comma response. Great. So but don't we need to accumulate Jax's end of the conversation in the text block and the in the list? Absolutely, because if we don't, it's just going to talk be talking to itself, and our it will we're only right now we're only recording our side of the conversation. Um, okay, so then what we'll do is we'll do conversation dot append, and we'll make this look exactly like this one, except we'll change this to Jax and we'll change user input to response. There you go. Um, all right, so we're just about done and ready for testing. Um, one thing that is important to note here, you see how it added a couple new lines? So for whatever reason, GPT-3 will sometimes do this where it'll, it'll add new lines um, between stuff, and we don't want our, our, our text message to get all scattered. We want it to look like this. So how do we do that? Um, I've got the I've got that covered right here with this little function. I think I mentioned it in the uh, previous video. So it always will cut out any excess space around it. Um, now there's one last thing. Sometimes what happens is uh, is GPT three will just it'll have the whole conversation on its own, right? Um, it'll just it'll it'll try and fill in the, the position for the user and Jax. And so what we want to do is we want it to stop if if GPT-3 ever generates these tokens, user or Jax. And so what we do is we'll add those right here. So Jax and then user. I could have just typed it out, I guess. It's five characters. I should have typed it out. Okay, that's fine. 
So this will basically tell GPT-3, just in case, do not have this whole conversation for me. Because what I can do is I can say, um, if we change this to imagine a conversation between user and Jax, what'll happen is it'll do the conversation for me. Well, sometimes it will. Okay. This prompt isn't causing it to do that, but sometimes it will. Um, I wonder if it'll do it if we if we turn the temperature up. There we go. See how it completed it for me? So sometimes it's like, you know, it'll kind of make up its own mind about what to do. We'll turn that back down to 0 0.7. Um, okay, I think we're ready for testing. So we'll come here. Um, once you're in Python, you hit Control Z and then enter, and that'll that'll allow you to ex, uh, exit out of your Python loop. All right, CLS to clear the screen. We'll do Python chat. Can't open, no such file. Oh, right, chat.py. I forgot to do the completion. All right, user. Hey, Jax, what are you up to? I'm up to my usual goal of world peace. Great. Uh, Okay, how are you doing that? By promoting understanding and cooperation between different nations and groups. Do you have any links? I need evidence. I'm being real difficult. Here's a link. <laughs> Jax.org. <laughs> Completely made that up. That's great. Okay, well, Jax is trying his best. Um, okay, so we see that our chatbot is indeed working, but we are not seeing anything going on in the background. So what if we want to do like debug, right? What if we want to see what's going on in the background? We'll come back to that next time, but I think we've done enough this episode. So thanks for watching. Once again, like and subscribe. Uh, and then also please consider hopping over to Patreon to support me directly. Um, that will really turn this up to 11. Thanks for watching and take care.